Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I don't know about you, but how many times have you gone and found a target in your sky map and you've slewed a telescope across to the target to find out it's behind a tree, behind a bush, behind a, a building or whatever, and you've got to go and find another target. Or at some point during the night, eh, the target has disappeared behind something and you've wasted a few hours while it appears out the other side, etc. So today I thought we'll take a look at the Horizon Creator plugin for Nina and how we can use it to build a horizon so when we're looking at the altitude maps in the Sky Atlas then we can see where our obstructions are lying relative to the path of the object. Alright, so let's head up onto the observatory and we'll see what I'm talking about. Alright, so here we are up on the observatory and fortunately towards my south, which is sort of in this direction uh, and around towards the northwest and round to the north, I've generally got a pretty good view of the skies with only the house uh, on the left here, uh, which is towards the south and then I've got this palm tree and a couple of other trees on the horizon and then as we move to rounds to the north so here we are now looking to the north and you can see we've got a bit more greenery uh, that will potentially obstruct us. I'm not really worried about the hills away in the background because I'll never be imaging that low but certainly when we're up around these trees they can sometimes get in the way uh, particularly though towards the east. This is when we run into my main obstacles. So here in the garden we've got this carrot tree and then in the neighbour's garden we've got this large tree over the back and then as we moved around to the southwest then I run into this palm tree which is right next to the observatory. So being able to see them on the sky map uh, before I select a target to go and slew to it or potentially where these might become an obstruction during the night then that's when Horizon Creator becomes useful to you. So let's head into the observatory now, we'll fire it up on the, the screen and we'll take a look at how to build it. Alright, so here we are inside the observatory. So I have set up the equipment as if I was going to be doing an imaging session. So here in CPWI, I've got the mount uh, switched on obviously and it's pointing to its home position and I've disabled tracking because we don't want the thing moving uh, while we're also trying to move it around. So it'll just help to uh, keep our bearings. And over in Nina, I've connected up all the equipment. So the dome's connected and it's tracking. So apologies for the noise if you hear it rattling around. I'm actually having to record this on my phone for the audio. I'm getting too much audio interference on the computer microphones that I'm using or the webcam microphone. And also the GoPro that I was going to use as an alternate, it's overheated with the temperature inside the observatory. So it's around 38 degrees centigrade inside the observatory at the moment. So I'm a little bit toasty with the door open and the, the slit open, which is helping get a little bit of a breeze through. Anyway, that's by the by. So here we are on Nina, and as I say, I've got everything open. Uh, I've installed the scope control plugin and the horizon creator plugin, because that's uh, what we're obviously going to use for doing the horizon recording. And on the equipment, what I've actually done is I'm not going to use the main imaging camera uh, for getting a view of the outside world. Uh, the reason for that obviously is I need to get the focus to where it uh, can see the target, whether it's a close target or a far away uh, mountain horizon for example. And by using the guide camera, uh, which is a similar focal length to the main scope, uh, I can use the manual focus knob on the side of the guide uh, telescope uh, a lot quicker than trying to drive the electronic focuser on the main camera. All right, and then back into the imaging tab. Uh, here we can see uh, I've got the image, image view, the horizon creator and the scope controls all open on the one view. So I've just dragged around the windows until I got them how I wanted. Obviously we need to be able to see what we're looking at so that we can then record uh, in the horizon creator, the reference point. And then I also need to control the telescope as well. And then the other thing is obviously the view. So in Nina, you can't do the live camera feed like you can do in, say, ASI Studio or in SharpCap. So what we need to do is just set up a continuous loop of exposures. And again, we'll have to compensate for whether you were doing this at night time or at dusk time or during the day by adjusting the exposure and gain until we can get an image. 
Uh, so what we're going to do to get that continuous feed is obviously switch on looping and then we're going to start by reducing the exposure time so I know at night time when I'm doing focusing and things like that uh, it'll the focus routine uses six seconds which is going to be far too long during the day during the day we're going to be down into the not point not not whatever's uh, so we're going to go down to not point not not two because I know that works I might have to adjust it slightly depending on what it's looking at and how the conditions are and I will turn off the gain I'll set that to zero and now with that set we can start imaging and uh, we saw a change there on the on the image uh, so we're taking our first shots and we can see down at the bottom uh, imaging is ongoing exposing download blah 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 so what we're going to do now is we are going to start tracking the telescope round so slowing the telescope round until we can start seeing things uh, here you can see on the scope control sorry the horizon creator graph uh, the radial plot, uh, the X marks the spot of where the telescope is currently sitting. Uh, so what we can do is we can start slowing the scope. Uh, we'll turn up the speed just until we can find something. And you'll probably hear the dome will start tracking. And as it comes over, I need to make sure I don't bang my head on the scope. Watch the image, see if anything starts appearing. We can't be far away from finding something. Oh, there we go. So I can start nudging this up. I'll reduce the speed. And I'll adjust the focus. The object, whatever it's looking at, is maybe far too close. Oh, there we go. What have we got? It looks like we've got some power cables about 50, 60 metres away. So we know that's an obstruction. And we probably wouldn't be lowering um, imaging at that altitude anyway. So let's just come up until they're out the way. That's close enough. And what we can see now is the X has moved on the horizon creator. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this as the first reference point. It doesn't have to be exact, so it's good enough. And we'll click the add button. And there we go. We've got the coordinates of the first obstruction. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start moving the scope slowly around in one continuous direction until we can find the next object. Now, obviously, being a... Uh, equatorial mount I'll need to up and down up and down until it can track along the horizon so what we'll do is we'll use this uh, telegraph wires as the reference point until we can find the first main obstruction which is going to be a large tree well, we're starting to get some bushes so we can just chuck another at point there and let's just keep moving. So this is the big tall fir tree away in the distance. So let's raise the scope up. See if we can find the top of it. All right, so I think that is the top of the tree or at least close enough. So I'll move that just out of the frame to the side. That's good enough. And we'll add that point. All right, so now I'll just continue my way around until I find the next tree. Now it's about what, for 10 degrees to the right next. All right, so here we've got some more obstructions. So we'll just add another point. And I will just keep continuing this all the way around and see what we get. So we'll be back soon. All 
All right, so we're halfway around. So we've taken up, here's all the points that we've got and we've tracked around from that big tree on the to the north all the way around the east guy. And now we're back to the south and we've got the top of the house or somewhere on the house because that's the terracotta tiles on the roof. So I'm going to flip the scope over just by slewing it completely the opposite way. And I'll just repeat the same process for coming down the west sky. And yes, anyway, I'll catch up with you soon. All right, so here we are back around the house. Now, I think I've done the full rotation now. We certainly ended up back away around. So it looked like the scope wasn't going to go any further. So I think we've covered the whole sky suitably. So what we need to do now is just click save. And we can save this to wherever you want. So you can pop it into your Nina somewhere. Uh, I'm just going to put it under the main direction and say horizon. Uh, Obo, that'll do, and just click save. So now let me just put the telescope back to its home position before it's sitting here for it. All right, so now that we've got that saved and uh, the telescope's pointing roughly home, uh, we can go to our options. And you'll see on the generals tab of the options in the profile, there's an astrometry setting down at the bottom and you'll see custom horizon don't stop playing catch up there we go uh, so we can now load that horizon file that we've just created and that's that there so now if we go to the sky atlas and pick a target so let me see uh, m101 and do search you can see on the altitude chart, we've got the transit of the object in the sky. And now we've also got this line shaded area at the bottom, which is the horizon file that we've just created. So now we can see, depending uh, on where the object is in the sky, time of day, etc. Uh, we know if there's going to be an obstruction. So you maybe set your imaging sequence to start at a given time and finish at a given time before moving on to another target if you're doing a multi-target uh, sequence during the night. So it certainly gives you that good information and certainly worthwhile doing. So I'm glad I've done it. It's taken me a long time to do it, but we got there in the end. And easy to do. The hardest thing is just remembering which button, whether your telescope's moving left, right, up, down, relation to east, west, north, south, and just keep nudging around the horizon every few degrees uh, until we get there. So if we look at the horizon crater tool, I was probably moving anywhere between two and five degrees uh, in the rotation as I grabbed each sample. So Obviously, it'll vary for your location. If you know if you've got a big clump of areas, you can just go straight up to a high point, slew the scope to the other side of the high point, and then take another simple point there, and that'll just give you a flat line across the top of a large area. All right, so there we have it. That's how to use the Nina Horizon Creator tool, and uh, yeah, maybe have to do it for the other scopes, which have got a slightly different view. Obviously, the one sitting outside the observatory bulk of their sky is maybe looking at the observatory as well as all the trees behind it so yeah it might look a little bit different anyway that's all i've got you for this video so thank you very much for watching don't forget to drop any comments or hit that buttons as you know what to do and we'll catch you in the next one so clear skies